Hello, and welcome to the Activation Nation podcast, your weekly source of actionable advice from industry experts in self-development, health, life vantage products, network marketing, and more to help you activate your wellness, your business, and your life. Today's episode focuses on self, one of the four pillars of belief. But first, the legal stuff. You may hear our guests talk about the income they've earned or how their health has been affected with LifeVantage. Please note that the average annual earnings of a typical active LifeVantage distributor in 2021 was $704. For the most up-to-date information, please click the link in our show notes. Any product statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Our products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And now, here's your host, to dive into today's story to help you activate your life. Welcome back to another episode of the Activation Nation podcast. I'm Selena Alger, the Vice President of Training Development, and I'm excited to be your host today. In this week's episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with Master Pro 10, Marcel Niederhauser. In this episode, we talk all about building belief in yourself. Marcel shares experiences about how he built belief in himself through action and how he enables his team to do the same. This is an episode you're not going to want to miss, so let's just jump right in. Hi, my name is Marcel Niederhauser, and I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the world, Lisa. We have five wonderful children, and They have supplied us with nine grandchildren so far. So we're excited about that. That's pretty good. Nine grandkids. So you're building your downline. Exactly. I tell (laughs) people all that. We got a good foundation started. So how long have you been involved with uh, network marketing? 31 short years. You don't seem old enough for 31 years, Marcel. Oh, you're so kind, Selena. (laughs) And when you got started, like, how did you end up getting involved and where did you start your career? Well, I was 28 years old. I was going to college to be an engineer. And I started a landscaping maintenance company. And I think I had three accounts at the time. And one day I was out work and my wife called me up and said, hey, Chris and Marina want to come over and show us a business. And I said, all right, come on over. Well, anyway, they came over and they introduced me to network marketing. And that was the first time in my life at 28 years old that I'd ever heard of that concept. And I'd ever heard of Amway. They, they, they introduced us to Amway. And when you were first getting started, do you remember like any concerns you had? Like when you're like, man, they're coming over to do this or should we jump in and make this decision to start this business? Do you remember any of the things that kind of freaked I'm gonna you out I'm going to tell there? you the first thing that popped to my mind. <laughs> when the guy was over there showing us, he was drawing out these circles. And when he got done, he said, if you'll spend the next two to five years of your life doing this, you'll never have to worry. And I remember I looked at him and I said, if you're lying to me, I will kill you. <laughs> I wish we had a way to record stuff back then. Because back in that time, we we're still using pay phones. And, um, and I think charger or those little beepers came out that you'd put oh, on your yeah. side. yeah, pagers. So anyway, pagers, yeah. So I, I wish I would have been able to document that. But that's how I got started. And I remember um, I went to school the next day. And, and I bought into what they say because I didn't have any reservations. I didn't have all this background or I hadn't formed an opinion about network marketing because I'd never heard of it. So I went to school the next day and I found out something very interesting. I was the only one in the world that had never heard of it and nobody else wanted anything to do with it. And that's really? how I got started. Yeah. So you were excited going and talking to some of your, your classmates and they were all like, this guy's nuts. Um, not some of them, all of them <laughs> and others that I didn't know. Matter of fact, it got to the point where there was a, like a point guard. He, he would sit out in front of the foyer or this big old, um, area, grassy area that where we'd walk to go to our different classes. And he would find out where I was. And then he would direct everybody else completely on the other side away from me because I have the type of personality that when I get information and it makes sense and I understand it, I'm not afraid to share it. And what I found over the time is everybody has an opinion of the industry, but they really don't know anything about it. But I had to learn how to communicate with people because I would as they would resist me, I would come on stronger. We'd get into a debate, sometimes an argument. Okay. And a lot of those people would miss two or three classes because we'd sit there and, and debate about it. So it did not phase you that when you were starting, you were excited about the business and you were just getting like 
basically rejection. That did not phase you from your belief in like, I can do this. I can build this. It fueled my fire. Okay. So when somebody tells me I can't do something, I'm going to prove them wrong. Cause I bought into it that simple. Cause I didn't have that, you know, that formed any opinion, but, um, I can't tell you that this was easy. Yeah. Everything about it scared me. I was not a public speaker, period. And I know we're going to get into that here a little bit later in the podcast, but um, I had to overcome a lot of things. So public speaking was one of them. Oh, I'd rather be burned by fire. Really? Yeah. That is so interesting. So how did you go from the kid in the middle of the courtyard who was just talking to anybody a little bit afraid of public speaking, getting rejected to who you are now. Because Marcel, you're you're a very visible public pro ten who's great at leading meetings and training. So, what was kind of that journey like of going from I'm just standing on a corner bugging everyone to to feeling confident in front of a room and like growing into that leadership role? Well, let me phrase it like this: I was 28 when I learned about it. I plugged into their system and. It took me 12 years okay. to get to the point where I was making the kind of money that a Pro 7 makes in our company. And that type of money allowed me to sell my business and go full time. And that happened at 40. And so during that process, I was going to functions. Um, we were in a very active upline. And so we were all working together. Um, I'd ever did a meeting on my own for probably the first 11 months. And the reason why I had to start doing my own is because I moved away to do an internship for engineering down in Tucson and I didn't have my upline around anymore. And so forced me, and that was a, a, a long transition. But in the process, this is gonna dictate my age, I've already said it, but they had a system in place and they had cassette tapes of recordings of successful people that were teaching these seminar and rallies and they recorded those and we got them once a week. And I was just sucking them up, just listening over and over and over. And the key to get me to go from where I was at to where I am today in that process happened then was I was learning and listening to all this stuff. I was trying to apply myself. If I could do a meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I could get through that still nervous and my hands was shaking. But if I had to talk to two or more people, again, scared to death, um, I would freeze up. Like I had to come over a lot of obstacles and, and, and I can't explain why I had that fear. I had been taught my whole life through this whole process, fear is false, evidence appears real. And that's true. Yeah. And, but by doing it over and over, I was able to overcome that fear because through the actions, I was getting results. And as you get results, it increases your belief. And when your belief increases, you do more actions. And that was the process. And so that's how I overcome it. But it still took a long time. And it still took me a long time to get over the fear of public speaking. But when you've gotten the results that you were looking for, and, and here's how I want to preface this. You're going to ask me questions later that will answer this too, but I wanted something. I wasn't lying to that guy when he drilled the circles and I threatened him. I really didn't mean that, but I wanted that. I wanted to have the choices that he presented to me that this industry will give you if you do it. And so I was willing to work over the fears. I was willing to work over. I, I never thought I was going to be where I'm at today, but I knew I was going to make the kind of money I'm making today. But I didn't realize in order to make that kind of money, you have to grow into the person that other people will follow. And so trial and error, consistently doing it. Did I have up and down? Did I think I was going to quit? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one time to kind of support this story. Yeah. I was sitting in one of the trainings on a Saturday and this lady was speaking and they called it a seminar. So they were teaching us the basic principles and things, how to build your business. And one of the things she said, she said, hey, take out a piece of paper and take notes because someday you will be up here speaking. And I was like a probably around a pro five in reference so people can understand. Okay. 
sitting in the audience, and I closed my book. I threw up in my mouth, <laughs> and I got wa- walked out, and I was leaving because I wanted what they had, but I was going to be the only one that never had to speak from stage to do that. That's how bad that scared me, and, and it's hard. It's hard to express that now for people that know me, but I love this because I know that if I can change, anybody can change. But the problem is I wanted something. And until you want something bad enough, you're not going to be willing to go through the obstacles and the ups and the downs and the fears and progress through that. Um, I've watched fear kill a lot of good people or shut them down that had very, very good potential. And so that that was something I learned over a long period of time. But I don't know why I was scared. I kind of get mad at myself for having those thoughts. But the key was doing it, being yeah. around people who are encouraging. And, and probably this is the biggest part of the equation is every 30 days I had a place to go where they were doing their seminar and rallies, which would be like a Life Vantage Academy. Matter of fact, it'd be exactly like that. <laughs> And it gave me the reassurance because during the month I was talking to people, I was getting, this is stupid. You're going to jail. You're crazy. You're not going to have any friends left. You're dumb. This don't work. It's a pyramid scheme. Well, a- and anything- at the same time, you were you were new. So you still had a full-time career at this point, right? Right. So you're doing all that on top of working a job, being away from your family, trying to figure out where does this fit into all those sacrifices. Right. So I'm getting beat up all month. And at the end of the month, I'm going to a place where they're saying, you're amazing. You're awesome. You're this, you're that, just complimenting you. And it took me, so you know, it took me eight months to sponsor my first person. Eight months. Eight months. And I remember the check in the mail was $3.62. And, you know, most people will think, well, that's not that much money. That lit me on fire. Just seeing I, it, it was to, tangible. The, the fact that it worked. And then I got sick to my stomach thinking, if it takes me eight months to sponsor somebody, I'll be dead before I get to the <laughs> highest rank. So it, it was an eye opener. But having that monthly, it took me eight months to sponsor somebody. Um, about five months later, I qualified for a direct distributor. So during that process and doing all that work and going to all those functions, I built the strength to overcome to that point. Now that's just that's just one more step. Yeah. There's still a lot of other fears you got to get over to get to the rest of the way. But that's where the success started to come. Well, and I think it's cool cuz it's not immediate and sometimes we think it is. This isn't your first company either. So there's a lot of times where careers grow and you start somewhere and it is or isn't a fit and then you look for a company or a culture or a system that's a better fit and so I think there's a lot of times people are like get discouraged when it's like, "Well, I tried this, it didn't work." You make a good point. Because Lisa and I gave our heart and soul for five years. And we had success. I had, I had nothing like what I have now. But we had that success. And I'm not going into details, but there's a lot of things that happened. It wasn't that I was looking for something else, but there were some things that exposed themselves. And we thought it would be better that we remove ourselves from there. And that was a very hard decision. Yeah. And for a long period of time, for some reason, us humans don't like to take the blame. We like to point the fingers. And so I was in this mode where I was blaming everything and and starting to bad mouth like others did that opportunity. And but here's the problem. When you're the type of person, the leveraged income that they show from this industry got into my blood. It was in my cells. And even though we'd walked away and Lisa and I had slit our wrist and mixed our blood and promised each other that we'd never do this again. And a few years later, an opportunity came. I resisted it for as long as I could. And then I finally let him sit down and a a complete transformation took place. And I realized all of the things that I learned was for a reason. I didn't have the success there. But what I was learned taught me how to build a company. And when I applied the things that I learned, I had my success in the other companies. And 
That taught me a lesson. Don't take bad experiences and use them as a crutch to deny yourself an opportunity. Take what you learned and apply it somewhere else in your life. And I mean, it doesn't actually have to be network marketing. This is the only place I know where you can be full time and do whatever you want, whenever you want, whoever you want, when you want. And all the forces of the world right now that's going on don't even phase you. Yeah. You know, there's a peace of mind. And it's like I tell people all the time, it was just a choice. And I have friends that are close to me and acquaintances over the years that chose different. And today, because of their choices, my life is a lot different than their life. And that is one thing that has really impacted me is if people only understood the decisions they make now determine five years from now, 10 years from now, et cetera. And so it's been a very rewarding industry and I'm grateful that I wanted something so bad, I was willing to go through all of the ups and downs. It's awesome because you had a lot of personal development in there too. So you talked about having those fears and those things that, you know, kind of held you back and took you eight months to sponsor your first person. I just think that needs to be on like the public life vantage record um, that, you know, early on people are different people than they are later in their careers. And I think that's one of the cool things about our industry is that opportunity to really grow as a person. So as you look at kind of that path forward, like what did you do there? Like you said, you had the awesome training tapes. Like, did you have mentors that helped? Were you going to masterminds, reading books? Kind of what was that process like for you, Marcel? Well, being part of that system, they'd figured it out. And so every motivational speaker, anybody you can possibly think of, we got to see. Okay. And it was outside influence yeah. and it was awesome. The training... And the mentoring came within our upline and within the system of the Jaeger system. And so by doing the work and then getting the results and having those experiences, and then as I listened to the cassette tapes, the cassette tapes were other people that had already gone through what I was going through. So when I was doing that work and I was listening to these people that I idolized, I could hear through their messages the similarities that they went through that I'm going through. So it was a reassurance to me that I'm going to get to that end goal because they went through the same thing. Yeah, you could see yourself and in so those stories. And so that slowly built that. Now, all the other outside influence was awesome. But if I wouldn't have been doing the work – None of that would matter because you can get all the training in the world, but if you don't apply it, you're never going to succeed. And there's a lot of people out there that are confused. They say, well, you got to get personal development first before you can succeed. That's not, that has no value. That's actually a lie because until you apply, you got to build the skill set first applying before you can even understand what the people are teaching you. And that was the one thing as I resonated. I heard messages like I'd get my favorite cassette tapes that I'd listen to. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the mentorship came from along with my upline. But I'd hear them for the first time. A month later, I'd listen to them. And there was a whole new message in there because of what? Three months from then, I could hear the things that I didn't understand because I had been applying myself during the time. And that's what a lot of people get hung up on is they want to go from A to B where they want to be and they want to shortcut it. Yeah. And there's no way to shortcut it because you will not get there because you will not be able to relate to everybody else that's going to go through the same things or similar things that you went through. So you got to go through it first so that you can bring other people through it. And I have an analogy. Okay. okay. I can analogy. Let's just say, let's just say there's a minefield. And I've been through it a hundred times. And so I know where to step and not get blown up. Okay. <laughs> and you're brand new and you're following me and I'm telling you, hey, step here. And you go, no, man, I want to, this is a shortcut. I want to step over here. And I'm going to say, okay, you can do that. It's your business. Have, try it. It might blow, blow you up, but go ahead. So my question to you, just for me telling you that, would you want to step where I already know it's safe to step or do you want to try it on your own? 
I mean, do I? Do you want me to answer the way my mom would tell you I would have done as a child? Yeah. Oh, you oh I for sure would have stepped on that <laughs> line, Mag. <laughs> but in my career and how I've grown, like obviously, I think it's super important that you follow mentors and leaders because they've been there. They've they've stepped on those landmines. They learn the hard way. So my younger self absolutely would have ran through that landmine and made you nuts, Marcel. You'd have been like, ah, there she blows again. <laughs> I know. Well, and that's how that's how people are. This. This whole concept is so simplistic. Now, the hard part, because people think network marketing is hard, okay? And in some sense it is because of what I'm going to tell you. But the principles and behaviors to succeed are so simple. Sometimes they're so simple that smart people can't see it because yeah. it's too simple. But the point I wanted to make, the part that I learned is where people struggle the most is the change that they have to go through to get other people to follow them. That change is why people think this is hard. That transition of I'm doing it to I have to get people to no, follow me. The transition you have to go through to build the belief to be able to gather and lead. Okay. So – you go, and, and I always use this analogy. Here's A, here's B. The, and B is where you want to be financially. Well, the distance to B is in concrete. That's already set, okay? It's the time that's the variable. Okay. And for every person, it's different because everybody has to grow at their own pace. So a good example some people might sponsor 10 to find the three or five or whatever they're looking for to get what they want. So I've always taught people to work with five at a time because you can effectively do that. And to find those five, some people might sign 10 up. Some people might sign 20 to find five. Some people might sign 100 yeah. to find those five. different. Because everybody. the belief that you have to build to get people to lead – happens along the journey. And some people in their life have already done things that give them that ability to be able to, to gather people. Some people are scared of their own shadow and they've got to go through what I went through. They got to go through all that time figuring it out. And that's where people, they don't allow themselves the patience to finish. So see the distance is in concrete. Okay. Actively showing the information 15 times or more a month. We found that 15 will give somebody some type of result, success, okay? And then more, as your group grows, you do more. But anyway, that's helped speed it up. And then always doing what you say you're going to do. That People like to follow that. If you say one thing and do another, people won't follow that. Yeah, and you lose trust really, really quick. Yep. Then you got to plug into a system. You got to go to the functions. You've got to get the reassurance of the belief. But the functions aren't just for you. As you gather a team, they have the same fears and all these same obstacles that you had to go over. They have them too. But when they go see the bigger picture, that's just not just you. But now they see the company or they see the people or they see people having success and they're being taught. That starts to build confidence in what they're doing. So it's a process. And then promoting. That's a big one. We need to learn how to promote effectively. And that is being able to get somebody to do something they don't want to do because they trust what you're telling them and you're not bribing them. See, a lot of, a lot of people that promote don't have enough confidence in themselves that they try to use props, give free things. They, they try to trick people to go. And I found if you can get somebody to go because they want to be there, because you showed the value and you're not paying their way or begging them or tricking them, you, the, res, the end result is way more better than what you get when you give somebody something for nothing. You get higher quality people because you're weeding out the ones that are just really oh, not interested. Okay, let me rephrase that. Every single person has the seeds of greatness in them. To allow them the patience to find that out. That's where they get mixed up. But as a leader, see, this is one of the reasons why I've had the success I've had is I went through the hard work. 
Nobody gave it to me. I did it on my own. So I expect people to do the same. So when you say the more quality people or the more, I can't remember the words you used, but everybody is that. But if they're taught wrong, they're still human. Yeah. And they're still, you can lose them. You'll find people who are more ready, I guess, to, to, well, to do what you're going to do. A, a person, a person, the only thing anybody needs is a reason why they want to do it. And if the reason's big enough, they'll get through the obstacles. And so... One of, the, one of the skills that I've developed in this business is I understand human behavior and we as humans are so predictable. And so by knowing that, it's allowed me to have the patience to work with everybody. And, and here's my secret. I believe in you until you believe in yourself. And if you will do your part, I will always do my part. And when my part lines up with your part, those people that get to that point find success. And I could start naming them off. We have so many pro tens in our business and so many pro nines and pro eights and pro sevens. And I've had a lot of influence in a lot of those people's lives, just a part. I didn't do it for them. I yeah. did it with them, but I taught them right from the very beginning. And that's, and I didn't make it easy for them because nobody made it easy for me. And, you know, this is always a debate, you know, how, <laughs> how to do things. But, um, I, I got to tell you, I saw what I wanted when that guy showed me the circles. And when I did this, I only want to do it once. See, I did this business so that once it was done, I didn't have to keep sponsoring people. I didn't have to keep doing it. All my time is spent helping other people get what I have. And by doing it right is I taught them right from the day they got into the business. Now, the 12 years that it took me to make as much as a, like a pro seven makes. Yeah. That's where I learned that. I made every mistake you did. I bought people's stuff. I begged them to come. I gave them this. <laughs> I did all those things. And guess what the results were? Neil, nothing. <laughs> and I had to start over. And because I wanted so something, something so bad, I was willing to start over. But here's the beautiful thing. Once you learn that, you don't have to learn it over again. And so, yes, I've been in a few different companies, but I had to go back to Amway is because that is when I went through this, all the fears. When I got into Life Advantage, I had zero fears. I had total confidence and we excelled because I learned all that years ago. And so anyway, I, if, if people could understand that one thing is take the time to teach them right, do it with them but not for them. And don't make it easy. Don't be a briber. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't really get that that method of promoting. I I don't use the speaker who's coming this week to promote. I promote the function so that the human that has behavior develops the habit of going to the function regardless who the speaker is. And well, then and that kind of goes back to what you'd said, though, like the habits, the behaviors, taking action. Because I liked when you were talking about how um, you build confidence by doing things. So we can sit around. That's how you build and, personal and, growth. And talk too, about stuff and read stuff and listen. And But until you're applying it, it that's, not, that's, that's where the change comes from within us is when we start applying those things and doing it. Yep. So you do the work. And then you can increase the other things you just said, the mentorship, the reading the books. Um, one of the very first books that I read was called Developing the Leader Within, John Maxwell, and it was the first one he had wrote. And this was 30 years ago, and I highlighted it. And just recently, over a year ago, I was inspired to pull that book out again, and, and I read it. You still have the original copy that you read the first time yeah, with all your notes it. and highlights? Yep, and here's what's cool. I read it again, and I highlighted it with a different color, and the knowledge that I had gained, but here's the best part, Selena. In chapter one, towards the end of the chapter, there were six levels of leadership. Okay. Six. And I remember back 30 years ago, I would just get on my hands and knees and pray. If I could just get to that second level of leadership, I will be the greatest ever. Right? 
Yeah. That's all I could see. I hadn't read that book for over 30 years. And I pulled through and I went through and I had made it to the sixth level. And that was one of the most humbling experience I've had in my life because all the emotions I had back then, because I wanted to succeed in this business and to see and understand. Because when I read the six levels, I didn't really understand what they were saying as he explained it. Now I totally understand it. And the sixth one was like mentoring the mentors to mentor the mentors, basically. And it was a very humbling experience for me. And again, the basis of all of this is I wanted something so bad, so bad, nothing was going to get in the way of that. And it was a journey. I can't tell you I was perfect all the time. I can't tell you that the thought of quitting didn't cross my mind. Um, so anyway, that's the journey was awesome. I love it. But once you develop the skills, not only do they help me in network marketing, they help me in every aspect of my life. And I'm puzzled to think that I used to be afraid of all of those things that did scare me that are second nature today. And that's from doing it over and over and over and over. And so I, I've always compared that to something. Okay, well, I wasn't on fire, but at age 40, I sold all of my businesses and went full-time in the industry. And this is all I've done for income since 40. I'm 50. Well, I'm 58. In July, I'll be 59. Wow. So almost 19 years now, I haven't had, quote, quote the traditional job. And I have never been able to find the words to explain what it's like to be fully invested and raise your kids with your wife and spend every ounce of your energy supporting them in all of their sports and now all my grandkids' sports. Not missing out on those Not, kinds of I things. don't miss out on anything. Unless you don't want to be there. Exactly. <laughs> but that's what drives us. Lisa and I were able to invest a lot of time in our kids, and we got wonderful children. And um, <laughs> I'm to that age now where I'm reflecting back and going, life's short. And what you do with your time, there's nothing more valuable than relationships. And so, obviously, those are things that are important to me. Some of the listeners here, that, that probably don't motivate them, but that motivated me. See, I'm not driven by toys or material things. That's not what drives me. But the result of becoming to that sixth level of leadership, it opens the door to where you can do things that others can't. It's different opportunities for you. It's, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. I'm living, I'm, we're all living in the same world, but my experience is way different than most people's. All because I had a reason why I wanted to do this. And when it came to me, I fought until I understood it. I didn't let the opinion of others, ignorance is what I call it. I didn't let the ignorance of others deter. So I don't, if a person is not going to pay my bills or feed my family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, their opinion matters don't get me wrong. I like to assess opinions, but when they're negative, I ignore them. And here, here's a caution. Here's what I would say to our listeners. I'd say find somebody that has what you want and validate that and then do what they did. And if they're willing to teach you, shut your mouth and listen and do everything they tell you. Because this is the th one thing. I love about this industry. I'll, I'll phrase it like this and I'll finish my sentence. <laughs> I got people all the time. We're going to beat you to pro 10. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I'm like, let me help you. Do you not understand the comp plan? I'll help you beat me to pro 10. I don't care. Does that make sense? I don't yeah. care. That's a unique way to be though. That's the thing that I was going to say. We want everybody to succeed. And, and here's the thing. I truly believe that everybody can succeed. That, that gives me a lot of hope because I know what I went through to get to where I'm at. But not everybody's willing to pay the price. 
One thing I learned early on is not to listen to what their mouth is saying, but watch their actions. So I phrased some terms. Um, 31 years in this industry, I have come up with a lot of little terms that I use to help people understand how to build the business. Because where we're so unique in the time it's going to take us to get to be, there's not one rule that fits all. Like I can't say do this one thing and everybody can apply it. Yeah, just it's copy impo- this exactly. It's, it, it's, it's impossible. So I, I have some phrases. And one of them is, is work with what you've got till you find what you're looking for. So somebody will say, well, how many meetings do I do a month? As many as you have to, to find what you're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I got some others and I'll, I'll bring them out as we go. But um, so through the 31 years, I've, I've done a lot of work. And through that work, I have gotten a lot of experience. And through the experience, it elevated my knowledge. Now that knowledge has turned into wisdom. And because of one of the skill sets I did develop, understanding human behavior, I can help anybody get through this. I've seen every single personality you can think of as far as like, you know, sometimes they're out of the box and it's unexplainable. (laughs) But in general, every question that can ever be asked, I've heard. Every shortcut that you can think of, I've done. And what I've found is those five things I talked to you earlier about, the 15 or more a month, always do what you say you're going to do, stay in control of your business, um, attend all the events, promote. Those, that right there is the personal growth and develop for every human that wants to get into this industry and succeed. And then allow yourself the time to develop. And as you're applying those consistently every single month and staying on top of it. See, that right there, those five things I just shared with you, I couldn't say this back then, but I can say it to every individual now. You are going to be so freaking excited when you meet the person that you are intended to become. It'll blow your mind. So where I was here, starting out to where I am now, completely, completely two different people. And so I'm not much of a guy that gets these little scripts out and tells people what to say or how to say it because it's so unnatural. And most people that are intelligent look at that when you're doing that to them, it it just scares them off, okay? I teach people how to think for themselves. Matter of fact, I hold their hand all along the way until they take over, until they take it away. Once they take it away, that's when they believe that they can do it. So I do that process, I believe in it. So this takes time. This ain't an overnight deal. It takes a lot of time to do this because everybody's so different, right? And so then when they take over, they take ownership. And that's what I love about those five things I just shared with you. By applying them, you will get the results, which will build your own belief. And then you'll take ownership. And when you take ownership, you no longer need me. You're on your own. Matter of fact, you forgot I was ever there in the beginning. Really? You forgot I ever helped. Oh, it's yeah. It's probably true, huh? Because you said you you believe in people so they believe in themselves. And so it's and, like and, they and probably I, forget I st- about that And I don't quit phase. on them. Yeah. And whether they're doing everything they can, I don't ever leave them until unless they quit. But I do expect them to do their part. I, I definitely expect that. And up front, the moment I'm at their house, we have that conversation. The do your part conversation? The do your part conversation. Absolutely. If I'm going to take time away from my family, then these people are, because I know if they do that, those five things, I know they'll find success. Now, some people take longer than others, right? Yeah. And I, how do you deal with that as a mentor and a leader when you have people who are just- You love everybody. Different trajectories. You, you love them all. You accept them for who they are. And if they want it bad enough, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. If they don't, that's not on me. See- Every one of you listening, this will work for you if you will do the work. But the biggest obstacle, the the person that's in your way, the one that you have to overcome 
is that one that stares at you when you're looking in the mirror. There's your, that's your problem. And once you overcome that person, the sky's the limit. See, people blame their upline, their downline, their crossline, this, that, uh, and the other. Yeah, those people can play a role and cause confusion and obstacles. Well, you remove yourself from the confusion and obstacles. It's just you. Figure out. Yep. But when you get a line of people working together, all saying the same thing, you experience momentum. You, you experience something that's so unique. And I love that. I have a, I have a, a, a parable that everybody's heard. Okay. And you're going to look at me and you're going to think, oh, heard this one. This is dumb, but wait till I finish it. Then I can so, judge it after you yep. finish. So here's, here's something that I came up with on my own through all of the experience I have. So I'm going to explain network marketing. And this is how simple it is. Okay, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. You teach him how to sell fish, he eats steak. <laughs> right? <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I, li I like the add on there though. That's what we're doing. That's the whole, all the steps of this. And when you give it to them, they only eat for that day. When you teach them the skills, but then you got to teach the other. That is where the mentorship is, teaching the mentors to mentor. And so I, I am so much gratitude in my heart for Life Vantage, um, for creating this environment that gave me a place where I could exercise my skills and reap the benefit in the compensation plan based on my activity and everything is a learning curve i didn't wake up and know all this i got a lot of years invested in this i have so much time away from my family in the beginning so i could have the rest of my life i was willing to do that but and you, you had a big vision going in i was willing to move mountains and that meant i had to humble myself that meant i had to be coachable and teachable i wasn't when I first got in, I was arrogant and very disrespectful. If I didn't like you, you knew it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Same thing with my group. I love everybody. The ones that irritate me the most, I love them. But because I developed the skill set, I don't have to wait for them because I can find the people, like you said, that are ready. That are ready. Yep. That's how I do it. I don't wait. I keep sponsoring until I find those people. I teach them right. I build it right. And I just stay in the sp sphere I don't even know what the words I want to use for that. But anyway, that's the simplicity of it. And, yeah. and, and it does. It comes with belief. And I know how to build your belief. I know how to believe in you till you believe in yourself. I will invest with every person that you make a commitment to that makes a commitment to you. And I put that time in. My goal now is to help hundreds, hundreds of people. There is a lot of satisfaction in playing a small part in other people's lives, directly or indirectly, as much as it is as getting that check. It's fulfilling. And I've made a, a, a very strong career out of this, and it's very rewarding. And I love people. And those that are hearing me now, I want you to have what we have. And I've been willing and able and determined to share myself and put myself in all of the places I have to do to help you as I've gone from the first level of leadership to the sixth level of leadership. And, and, and when I say that sometimes too, Selena, is people's de um, definition of help is different my job is not to go hold somebody's hand and walk them through the steps. Now, if I go out and sponsor somebody, I'm committed to that person for the next two to five years, and I'm doing all of that. Really hands-on. Hands-on, yeah. I'm fully committed to that person. And, you know, I see a lot of this drive-by sponsorship that happens. They get them in, then they don't mentor them or teach them or they expect somebody else or, you know, a lot of people depend on the company 
to build their business for them. And it's just a constant. Here's what you hear with people that have that mindset. We need a tool. We need another video. We need this. We need that. Then they get that fulfillment. And that's not enough because they didn't develop the skills to develop people. And then they turn around. Oh, I need this now. I need that. Like <clears throat> it's ongoing. And I'm not saying that disrespectful. It's just after 31 years, you kind of understand this industry. And when you've had the success that we've had, you really understand it. Like I've always heard that saying, people who understand interest make it. People who don't pay it. Right? Oh, I like that. And money is just an extension of who you already are. And I believe you develop skill sets through your life. Money is a abundance. It's everywhere. And everybody can have it. It's just going through the processes of the things that we've talked about today to figure out how to be a steward of that responsibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I, I would guess that your vision of what you wanted changed as you hit different goals and and as you, like, I, I can't imagine that, like, coming in, you're like, yes, this is exactly where I'm going to be. But how did that kind of change your, that, what drove you and that vision? And how did your goals change it, as here's, you, you here's, grew? Here's a, a disease that I have. I like people. And I want the people that have come into my life that want this business. I want them to have what I have. And I feel a moral obligation to help those people that are willing to do their part. And, you know, I saw in the questions, there was these mastermind questions. And so one of the things I've done, I masterminded a training program that I've gotten a lot of very good stewards involved with me in, and, and together we've done this, but I was the brains behind it. And it's because I understood something that I thought it was time I should open a platform and teach it. And that's when I say staying in control of your business, there's a process out there called taprooting or building depth or yeah. driving legs, whatever. People have all these terminologies. Different terms for the, yeah. the behavior. And I understand all the processes, how to go down, find what you're looking for and help develop that. Marcel, if you could give one piece of advice to that little Marcel who wasn't nervous that he'd maybe never make it to level two of leadership, what would it be? Man, I wish I could go back in time and punch him right in the forehead <laughs> and say, get out of your way of yourself, grow up. But fear is real. It is so real. And my advice to that guy would be, I am so grateful that you had a dream that you wanted something because what I've gone through to get here is priceless. You know, you asked a question earlier, you've been in other companies. Yeah, we've been on the top of every company we've been in and I don't have the time or feel like I even need to explain, but when you're aligned with the corporate staff that's in line with you and they're doing their part, building principles that work and they let you do your job, and we're all supporting each other, magic happens. And I feel like 100,000% we are at that point in this company at, that, at this time. And that's when magic happens. I'm excited for the magic. So in, other, in that, some of the other companies, the leaders and the staff, and, and the reason why it's important, because corporate has the power to make decisions that influence in the field. And so as opportunities have come, we landed in a home where we're here to stay. And I, I believe with all my heart, the stars have aligned. I believe they aligned when we were, when we were brought here. You know, I didn't really get to tell that story, but I'll say how life vantage started for us is we got invited. We were in some turmoil and the CEO at the time reached out to us and flew to Salt Lake to meet with us and he missed us. So he invited us down. That was on a Friday. He invited us down on the Monday, on a Monday, to go visit. And before I went down there, I got an email that said, hey, 
watch this ABC primetime. So I did three times. I could not believe all of the promises that that video made to me. I'm not going to elaborate on those, but, <laughs> but it piqued my interest. So we went down, we saw the opportunity. We caught the vision while we were down there. And then it dawned on me. For the first time, there was a third-party validation, a tool, that when I watched it, it made me want the product. I have never in my life since I've been alive seen a tool produced by a company that inspires that type of thought. And that lit me up. And so that was our introductory. We came home, hit the road running, and, you know, Tyler and I have had a lot of success in this company. And that all of that success and all those things we did stem right back to those five things that I talked to you about. We mastered them. This is my last thought, what I'm telling. We mastered them first, and then we taught other people how to do the same. And then we helped them teach other people how to do the same to where it got to the point where we were removed out of the equation. And now we have the replication of people teaching people what they need to do. So, Selena, thank you for this opportunity. I, I appreciate my time with you. You've been such an asset to this company, and we are so glad that you are here and the opportunity to work with you. And just thank you so much. You're, you're too kind. This has been a lot of fun for us, and we're excited to, uh, to be able to put out more stuff that people can use to build that belief in themselves, to, to be excited about that magic that you talked about that we know is coming and we're all going to be a part of it. Because you're right, when we're in those growth modes and everything's aligned, there's not, you can't explain it. And it's just a feeling that everyone here is ready to have and deserves to have. So thank you for being with us today. You're so welcome. And I guess I'm going to end with is the part of my business that helped me develop to where I was is every day I had something like what we just did to listen to and help me reassure myself I was doing the right thing. So if you look at the process, every, every month we have something to plug into called Life Vantage Academy. Every quarter we have an elite academy which substitutes the Life Vantage Academy. And now we're going to have something that teaches us daily. So we're being taught daily, monthly, and quarterly. And every one of those things has a different impact in the way the brain functions yeah. and how we build our belief. What so, people get out of it. Yeah, exactly. And to have that daily reassurance is going to be so powerful. That way we're continually teaching people and not just teaching them once a month or quarterly. And then they have to go out there and do it, right, Marcel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where they'll really get into action and build that confidence. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Marcel. We appreciate you being here. I'm sure we'll have you back. Love to. Thank you for tuning in to the Activation Nation podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Tell your friends and share your biggest takeaways from today's discussion with anyone who could benefit from them. This episode is sponsored by Life Vantage Legacy, a nonprofit dedicated to improving lives and building a lasting impact for those in need around the world. Learn more at lifevantage.com. We look forward to sharing more with you during next week's conversation. Thanks for listening and being an important part of the Life Vantage community.